Yeah, we've had a, a very nice opportunity for some rest and some recuperation given the, uh, the international break. Uh, fortunately, with the Club America game, it hasn't been uh, too stretched out. I think the guys have, uh, have got the, the right balance of time off, uh, recovery, but also workload. We've had a terrific week this week. The weather's been absolutely magnificent. We're into uh, you know, one of the, the more pleasant stages of the year to play. And uh, the guys are obviously looking forward to uh, a home game and uh, an important running. Final two games that are going to determine our, uh, our destiny. Thank you, Coach. We'll start with Tim Sullivan, then go to Drake Hill. Go ahead, Tim. Hey, Gary, you mentioned the, uh, the America game there. What do you feel like you got out of that game, not just you know for the game itself, but that you can take into these final two regular season games and then, of course, the playoffs? I, I got rid of so many things. I mean, it seems a little while ago now, um, and of course it isn't, but so many things. You know, guys that have not had loads of minutes, that came in and performed in an excellent fashion, very effective. I thought there were some wonderful passages of play, goals and pressure. Um, in the end, the penalty shootout was very beneficial for us. First time we've obviously been able to overcome an opponent in, in a situation like that. So some invaluable experiences um, from the penalty spot for many of those guys, but probably and most importantly, some really, really good performances um, and some competitive minutes against a very, very good team. And I would imagine uh, a very, very exciting game to watch. Thank you, Coach. Let's go to Drake Hills and Claudio Villalba. Let's go ahead, Drake. Thanks, Matt. Hey, Gary. Um, just a quick question about this game in particular. It's the last home game, of course, as you know. And it's the game that you guys can control your destiny playoff-wise. In terms of that, how much importance or focus is there on in, in controlling your own destiny, and particularly when it comes to a fighting for your home field playoff game? Is, how important is that for you guys? Well, everyone understands and realises the, the opportunity in front of us. We, at home, can obviously can control far more than maybe we could do uh, away from home. I think the real difficult world that you certainly don't want to slip into He's thinking that you know we're in a good spot. Um, if we just turn up and and uh, you know get the kit on against Houston, the job will be done. And and, it, and you couldn't be further from the truth. Um, we suffered one of our most disappointing, frustrating, and I would say um, upsetting results in Houston when they beat us and played for I think more than 45 minutes with 10 men. It, it, it was a difficult day and you know that's been really uh, offered up to the players again that this is a group that are more than capable. Um, the season's not gone how they would have planned it, I'm sure, but they've invested a lot of money in this group and there are a lot of good players and given the right opportunity, given the right platform and circumstances, they've shown they're capable of beating the very best. So we go about our business in a very same uh, very same way that we would any other week. Everyone understands and appreciates that the window of opportunity to clinch and certainly to maybe put ourselves in an even stronger position is very narrow and limited. So therefore the job's got to get done. And my hope is that the guys come with the right attitude. Um, it's rare that they don't. They attack the game in the right fashion. And again, it's rare that they don't. And we get a good job done, and that's as simple as it gets. Thank you, Coach Claudio. You're on with Head Coach Gary Smith. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Coach, um, well, Nashville has been unbeaten for the last six games, uh, which is very positive, of course. And on the other hand, Houston has lost uh, nine of his last 11 playing away. Uh, how much does that tell about the, the, the shape of a team like Houston, which is a very proud team, has won it all before, we know it before a game like this? How dangerous they become with a record like that? Well, like I said, the, the, the danger comes very much from the talent within the group. Um, guys that are capable of turning any game on their on its head in the blink of an eye. They've got a lot of pace. 
They've got some terrific individualism. I think the the away games, nine out of 11 being beaten, in contrast to probably how difficult it is to play in Houston, can sometimes be the challenge for a team. You, you have such a, a strong home field advantage and, and they are, not necessarily this year, but they are a good home team. It's not easy to go there and play. Climate obviously plays into that massively. And it can sometimes be debilitating for teams to go there and, and play in that heat. Maybe they've found it a little bit more difficult to find some traction away from home. I certainly won't be taking anything for granted. There's not a huge amount of pressure on them. It can sometimes relax players. It can, it can offer the opportunity for them to express themselves. And, and we certainly don't want to give them any sort of window of hope. Otherwise, it's going to be a really, really tough evening. Thank you, Coach. We'll swing around to Ben Wright and then Drake Hills. Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, Gary, um, you kind of touched on the, the Club America game a little bit, but we saw performances from guys who hadn't necessarily contributed a ton to the, to the squad. Um, do, do you expect any of those guys to have kind of more inclusion based on their performance? And then kind of on a similar note, Hanwala um, came off injured. Do you have an update on him? Is he, is he going to stay in Nashville, or is, is there any chance that he goes back to Memphis and, and is able to play? Yeah. Well, let, let me take that one first of all because it's, it's fresh as in my mind. Uh, unfortunately, Ham Waller um, had a slight adductor strain. I think that will hinder any sort of football that he plays, certainly here or back to Memphis, uh, purely because of that. If he recovers in time, I think the opportunity is still there. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the group up in Memphis, I think, are, are very keen to have Ham Waller back. And we're obviously keen for him to, you know, keep experiencing that, that match play time. But, you know, we'll have to see how that injury unfolds. Um, as far as the other guys, they're very much in the group and in the mix. Um, we have a couple of players that are a little bit of a doubt. But other than that, everyone is available and, you know, putting pressure on the next person in front. I'm not going to announce a team. I don't ever do that. You know that. Um, I'm not going to give you any insight into what I think some of the changes might be but I think we can say and I did reinforce it after the game there were a number of guys um, I thought Aki played very decently I thought Ethan did a terrific job Luke for 90 minutes I thought played as well as we've seen him for a long long time um, Brian Anunga you know he's, he's you know you can imagine absolutely um, you know chest pumped out and uh, you know, full of confidence after winning a penalty shootout for us and playing 90 minutes and performing very, very well. To name but three or four players. We're in a good place. There's some terrific competition. The guys, are, I think, have rounded into some form at a good stage of the season. We need to keep that momentum going. Thank you, Coach. We've got Drake Hills and Tim Sullivan. Go ahead, Drake. And Gary, further along the, the roster update lines, I just wanted to get an update on, on Anibal. Obviously, the, the thigh issue, the leg issue that kept him from Austin, got an extra break with the Leagues Cup plus the international break. Is he 100% now, or how is he doing? Well, he's, he's actually moved forward quite nicely in the break. It came at a good time for him, um, and for us, of course. So, we've had Annabelle out on the field. He's going to be, uh, I think it'll be a last-minute decision, Annabelle. Um, trying to give him as much time as possible for obvious reasons. His influence around the group is, is always a, a positive one. So we'll leave that till the final minute to see if we can get him in the group. But he certainly moved in, in a, a really uh, bright direction given where he was. Um, the only other questionable body was Alex. Um, and again, similar position to Annabelle, um, going to try and give him as long as we can. He's been out on the field the last couple of days. He's, he's looked in a much better place. And it really, this one will be down to, to Alex, really. He's had uh, a, a couple of symptoms from uh, a previous uh, concussion, but nowhere near as, uh, as debilitating as uh, he, he maybe was previously. But, of course, we want to be very, very cautious with him for that reason. But he's, uh, he's done some nice work. He's, he's been involved um, uh, in some decent products out on the field. And, uh, we'll, you know, again, we'll leave it right to the last minute. We'll go to Tim Sullivan and wrap it up with Claudio on the Zoom. Go ahead, Tim. Victor, you mentioned that uh, 
your fate is in your hands in terms of, of sealing a trip to the playoffs. But um, you guys are since you guys are one of the Sunday evening games, it could ha even happen before you guys take the field. Are you going to watch some of the games that kind of impact where you guys could end up? Are you going to actively avoid them? What is your kind of the way that you approach that in terms of kind of seeing what the out of town scoreboard says for you guys? Yeah, I'm sure there'll be some of the the, the um, match play to tomorrow night that I can tune into. I, I certainly won't put myself in a position where you know there's some tense and stressful moments if I want a particular team to to try and pick up points and a result. Um, you know, most of the time it's it's really nice to to just watch other teams that you might be running into again, or you know maybe feel as though uh, you, you you could be uh, competing against in a, a possible postseason scenario. Um, other than that, I'm not sure. You know, there's always something on 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 a game. You know, if the results go our way and it's a big if, then you know Sunday's game presents a very different um, challenge to us to try and keep pressure on those top four spots. If it doesn't go our way, then of course we want to win the game to, to make sure that we clinch um, on Sunday evening. Either way, there's a lot of ifs flying around, so the games that I watch will be purely for enjoyment and not to make me feel any more stressed out than I will be on Sunday evening. We'll wrap up the Zoom with Claudio and then finish up the availability on the floor here. Go ahead, Claudio. Uh, thank you, Matt, again. Um, coach, obviously, this is going to be the first, the third time that Nashville goes to the playoffs uh, consecutively, which is a record, anyways, in the league. But uh, if I was to push you a little bit, what makes Nashville, this this time around, a team with a better option to go further, further in the playoffs? Yeah, that's a really good question, Claudio. Um, I mean, number one, to be above that line again, and I said it some time back and was, I think, ridiculed in some circles for it, about it being, um, if not our greatest achievement to date. And there were a lot of things wrapped around that, of course, you know, Western Conference, waiting for a new stadium to come online, having to perform in that stadium, as, as lovely as it is. Um, you know, some huge challenges this year that I think the players have yet again not only overcome to a large degree of you know found themselves in maybe our leanest run of form six games without a victory came through it in flying colors have now got ourselves on a, a, a very good unbeaten run again um, at every juncture the guys find a way to get themselves back on track and to put themselves in a good place so I, honestly, I couldn't be more complimentary. We've still got work to do, you know, so I want to be um, sensible about our, uh, you know, answer the next part of the question, but I certainly couldn't be more complimentary about how the guys go about their business, how competitive they are, how professional they are. In terms of what the next steps look like, I do honestly think it will be very much influenced by these final two games. Um, to your point, if we want to better what we've achieved in the past, we've got to leave ourselves in a spot where we at least give ourselves an opportunity, um, a window, a home game, um, a lift, and, and maybe a, a stepping stone to where we want to be, which is competing for silverware. On the way to that, dependent on where we finish, and hopefully, of course, touch wood, we get our job done and we are above the line. Um, we know we're running into some, some difficult opponents and whether they're at home or away, it will not be plain sailing. But this group, I think, have grown. I think the experiences of the past will serve us well. I honestly think the Club America game and the penalty shootout was another step in the right direction. We've gone from zero penalties scored against Philly to four or more penalties scored against Orlando. Unfortunately, still not winning that tie. To now missing the first penalty, scoring four and winning a shootout. That, that's, a, that's a boost. It's another step in the right direction. So experiences have been gathered along the way. The guys will be in a great place. I think Han is in as good a form as he's ever been 
of course he makes a huge difference to, to where we're going and what we're doing. But I think the guys in general um, are as ready as they've ever been should they get above that line and, and as eager to, to, to make that next step. And I think that's just as, just as important as any of those, those qualities. Thank you, Coach. We'll wrap it up here on the floor before bringing on National Sea Defender Dave Romney. Go ahead, Tony. Gary, it's Fan Appreciation Night on Sunday night. Um, your message to the, the supporters ahead of this one? Yeah, um, well, I think uh, first and foremost, um, they've been absolutely wonderful for us this year. I think our home stadium has become a venue um, that we certainly are excited to be in. Um, they've made, you know, almost a cauldron of, uh, of noise and of atmosphere, which has, I think, benefited us for the most part. Um, it's excited other teams, of course, but my message to the fans would be, you know, to keep us at boiling point, to, to stay behind the group, to give us that almost extra man come Sunday and, and hopefully into what we would love to be a, a home playoff game. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Of, uh, of international duty, you, you had a pretty good chance to work with guys other than Walker over the past you know, week and a half. Who, who among those guys impressed you? And especially, obviously we've seen a lot of Jack. Did you get a chance to work with maybe a guy like Ahmed a lot in training as well? Um, honestly, not really. It's, it's mostly just been Jack. Uh, and we got to play together uh, prior to Austin, or I guess in Austin, because Walker had the yellow card accumulation or the red card, I guess it was. Um, but yeah, I mean, Jack's played a ton of games in MLS now. He's a solid, strong defender. So, I mean, we've played a lot together before. So, it's good to get chemistry with him as well, and just ready to go if he gets called upon. We'll go back over to Tim Sullivan. Go ahead, Tim. Yeah, Dave. Obviously, the uh, the first Houston game was one of the first games of the year. I think it was one of the first times you guys kind of really got got hit on the chin. What do you remember from that game? What can you take from it? And then, obviously. How do you feel this team is different than, you know, one of the first, I think, two or three games of the season? Yeah. I think I remember, too, I mean, it was one of those tough weeks, I think, where we had three games in a week. I think we played on a Wednesday, and then we played them on a Saturday. And I think they might have had rest. Um, and then Houston is always just miserably hot. Uh, so we were kind of just played off the pitch. We were extremely fatigued, and sometimes those games just kind of go against you. We've actually... In the last couple of months, I think, gotten a couple of times when we've gotten to play a team coming off a Wednesday game, and we didn't. And those games just make all the difference, and you have to take advantage of those. So Houston is definitely a good team. They have a lot of attacking threats, and they're solid going forward. They're good in possession. So we just need to make sure we're on our, our best defensive mindset with them. But we know if we control our part, we control our energy. It's definitely a team we can beat, and it's not some team we need to be afraid of because we lost their 2-0, and they kind of played us off the pitch. It was kind of more a result of the stresses of that week and not necessarily them being a lot better than us. But we still need to take them extremely seriously because we can clinch a playoff spot if we play well in this game, and that's what we all want. Because going to LAFC next weekend is not going to be an easy place to play if we need to pick up points badly. Next we'll go to Ben Wright. Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, Dave, um, I mean, earlier in the year you mentioned that Houston game um, kind of in a, in a more difficult run of form. You guys are obviously in really good form now. Um, it, it might have taken a little while, but it, it seems like playing at home has really started to kick in and, and help you guys. Just how important has been the, the kind of back backloaded home schedule and how important it, is it going to be to be at home, um, to, I guess, on Sunday when you could potentially clinch a playoff spot? Yeah, it was it was definitely weird uh, the, the way we kind of shaped this season. You had eight straight road games, and so you kind of get into a mindset of playing defensive, playing a lot on the road, and then when you go back home, you have to com kind of completely shift your mindset of way more pressing, attacking, building out, stuff like that. Um, we had a little bit of success at first, and then we hit kind of a dry spell, but it's been really, really nice to have the fans still behind us, still supporting us. And then once we finally got off a, a strong stretch of games that we've been on, I think it's six straight uh, undefeated and a couple at home, um, the energy of the fans and us just playing well, I think that pressure has been lifted of finally getting a – I just stepped in gum, I think uh, – <laughs> of finally getting a good run of results at home. Next, we'll go to Claudio yeah, Villalobos. All right, I guess he just got caught. Yeah, he just got caught. Go ahead, Claudio. How much of, the, of, a, of, a, of a push has been after the, the, uh, the game, again, America, America's game? I've asked this question to a couple of the other guys. 
in, in, in your in your in your site, uh, how much of that has been uh, a boost for for what's coming up right now with this with these two next games and whatever happens in the playoffs after meeting a, a, a strong a strong house like like the America? Yeah. Um, I mean, they had they had a fair amount of guys on international duty, I think, and then they were rotating guys. Um, but it's still a good win. They're still a really good team, um, so you can never take them for lightly. Um, but it was just really nice. Those games are always really nice to get guys who don't get the most minutes, time to play on the field, time to play in a big-time game, and we had a lot of guys step up, so that was good. And so, I mean, knock on wood, you hope nobody goes down, but if they do, then you guys you have guys who got minutes in a big game recently, and they can be called upon, and hopefully they're more – ready to go than had we not gotten that game where they got to get minutes in. So those games are always fun. It's always nice to get the fans involved in a nice game like that and other of the like Latino community who want to see Club America play to get them a game. But it was big for a lot of our guys to get some minutes who hadn't gotten them before. And it's always nice to get a little, little win bonus. <laughs> go ahead, Tim. Hey, you guys weren't running out anybody wearing like number 200 or whatever. <laughs> yeah, <Yeah>. exactly. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I asked Gary the same question. Um, you guys can obviously clinch um, based on what you do on Sunday, but there's a bunch of games tomorrow that, that could potentially impact where you guys end up in the playoffs. Are you the sort of guy who like keeps an eye on those games? Are you the sort of guy who lets the dust settle and looks at it after the weekend? How do you kind of approach that? Or do you, or, or do you have a, a planned approach to it? Yeah, that? I mean, even if I didn't keep track of it, everyone coming into the locker room Sunday would be talking about it, and we would kind of know what we want to do and have to do and stuff like that, but... I usually do keep track of those things and kind of know what we need to get. And, I mean, all of us at this point are still fighting for a home playoff game. That is the first and only goal right now. I mean, it would be nice to clinch before, but all of us know if you want to go far in playoffs, getting as many home games as possible is huge. Uh, so getting a highest seed as possible will do us a lot of favors. Maybe if one of those top teams loses by any chance and we can somehow find our way into getting a home playoff game even further in the playoffs than just the first game. Because um, anything can happen in a one-off game. So it's just focusing on these next two games. We really, really need us all at home. And then just hoping, I mean, LAFC doesn't have support shield locked up. So they're probably going to bring it in the last game too. So it's just two, two tough games. But kind of what we did in the last six games is because we kind of put ourselves in a tough spot, we've been treating these basically as playoff games and bringing that kind of mindset forward. So I think we've been playing well, and hopefully we can keep treating these like playoff games because they kind of are. Thank you, Dave. Truly appreciate your time. Folks, we will send out this footage in the coming hours.